Hi, have you ever had a use case when you have an RxJS stream of data and you want to shape some state from it? For example, accumulate all emitted values in one array, similar to what I do right here with click events. And I do it in order to accumulate values and generate a click map by rendering circles with the coordinates of the actual user click. For similar scenarios, I see the solution like this one quite often. And despite it being working solution, uh, it has few drawbacks, which I will mention a little bit later. But I think for many of you, they are pretty obvious here. So watch this video until the end and I will show you how you can create and maintain the state right inside your RxJS streams. So you can deliver your data straight to the component view and avoid the explicit subscription to your observable. I will show you how to do it the scalable way so you can easily add the functionality like state resetting or removing some certain element from the state. My name is Dmitry Mrzenski and my mission is to help people to become advanced Angular developers who really knows what they're doing and understands how things are really working. You can check out my YouTube channel later and see the topics I covered in the past, but today let's focus on managing state in RxJS observables. All right, so let's very quickly go through the disadvantages of the current implementation. Firstly, we explicitly subscribe to observable, meaning that now we have to manually handle unsubscription. And it would be much better to use something like a sync pipe or convert uh, this observable to a signal so we can deliver data straight to the component view and let the sync pipe or the uh, signal handle unsubscription automatically for us. Secondly, we lose the reactive context and we start imperatively manage the state. This mix might be convenient initially, but it becomes much harder to maintain when logic gets more and more complicated, especially if there are a lot of uh, asynchronous stuff is involved. Usually, if you follow the reactive paradigm, you want to keep your data inside your stream for as long as possible and resolve it already in the last moment inside the uh, component view or subscribe to it at the very last moment if you cannot avoid the explicit subscription. For example, somewhere inside the Angular directive or service. So let's have a look how we could solve this task without explicit subscription and staying reactive. So first, let's remove all this stuff here, including the click events array, because we will not need it anymore. And uh, let's start delivering clicks directly to the component template. Currently, you see an error because the value being delivered is a click event and not an array as it is expected. And, and to address this issue, we have to aggregate the click events into the array within this stream. And this is where scan operator becomes useful. And to deal with the state, the operator needs actually two things. It needs some initial state and some function that this state will be updating. So the initial state we can define as a second argument of the scan operator function. And depending on your use case, you can define actually any value there. I need to aggregate events into an array. So in my case, the initial state would be an empty array. Another argument of the scan operator is so-called accumulator function, or simply saying this is a function that creates and returns a new state based on the current or the initial one. This function will be involved each time when the source emits a new value. And this accumulator function takes two arguments, which eventually allow us to shape a new state. Those are the current state and the entity which is emitted from the source observable. And now with this data, I can shape a new state by cloning the 
current one and adding the new event to the end of this new array. So now uh, this new state will be propagated downstream to other operators or subscribers like in my case and also when the accumulator function is involved next time the value returned by this function will appear inside the state function argument then again we reshape the state and this new value will be propagated downstream to my subscriber and this process just continues and in such a way we will be accumulating next uh, click events using one array and this is it now we have achieved the same result as we had before but we do it reactively and we do not manually uh, subscribe to the observable which is really cool however besides the value accumulation we would need to perform some other operations like state resetting before we proceed i would like to quickly remind you that if you want to learn angular in depth you can check out my video courses which can bring your angular skills to entirely new level for example i have one of the most advanced uh, video courses about angular forms and there you will learn everything about building the complex form controls like this complex drop down component which has a searching functionality multi-selection and accessible keyboard navigation and we will develop it together from scratch without using any third-party libraries except the angular cdk or if you want to start with unit testing in angular but you don't know where to start uh, i have a also dedicated course that helps you to grasp the general idea about the testing and uh, we will start with testing the most primitive uh, utility functions and then eventually we will master more complex scenarios like testing components with uh, content projection or testing the structural directives with asynchronous code. All the links will be in the video description so you can check it out but now let's get back to that topic. All right so how do we reset the state of the scan operator? Well it might seem a bit more complicated because the state of clicks isn't available from outside the RxJS stream so we have to perform it somehow inside right and for that we would need to have another stream that will emit values when the state is supposed to be reset and for that purpose we can use a simple rxgs subject having that we can emit the value into this uh, reset stream whenever the user clicks the reset button or you might have some other triggers but in my case it will be like that and then the idea is the following first i want to combine those streams into one which will be emitting either click event or undefined and to achieve that i can use another familiar and helpful operator called merge which takes the observables you want to merge as arguments after that in the accumulator function i will be checking if the value emitted by the source is defined then it means that the value came from the clicks stream so i have to add this click event to the state but otherwise if i get the undefined it means that the value came from the reset stream so i would need simply return the empty array and in such a way i kind of reset the state so now if we save this change you can see that if i click on the page emitting the click events i accumulate values in my state but when i click reset button it emits the undefined and accumulator function returns an empty array and in such a way my uh, clicks state is reset this solution works okay while the logic here is very primitive however when things become more complicated this solution doesn't scale well so let me show you the solution that i learned many years ago and i don't even remember where exactly but uh, this solution worked quite well for me until now and i will be happy to share this solution with you so the idea here is to emit 
from source observables, not a row values like I currently do, like click or undefined, but instead we will be emitting handler functions that know how to update uh, the state for the particular operation. It might look a bit complicated at the beginning and indeed I would say that this solution is quite advanced, uh, but it will hopefully become more straightforward once we start using this approach in practice. So let's get started with the accumulation operation. We can actually represent this operation as a high order function that takes the emitted value as an argument and returns another function that will already know how to update the state for this operation. So now we can copy the corresponding logic from the scan operator and uh, place it uh, right here in this uh, new uh, function. Good. Now we have to create a similar function for the reset operation. And this is going to be also the high order function, but this time it takes a void because the subject emits the value of type void and returns another function which also can take a state as an argument, but it doesn't use it and just simply returns the empty array. You could remove all those uh, arguments, but I decided to leave it because for some of you, maybe this verbal notation will be easier to understand. So now how do we use this function? First, we have to transform values emitted by our source observables to the corresponding handler functions. And for that, we can simply use the map operator, which I hope you all know how it is working. But yeah, anyway, here for the accumulation operation, I have to call the accumulate handler function, which, as you remember, returns the state handler function for exactly this operation. So now instead of the pointer event, we will be emitting the function that captures this event and updates the state when this handler function is called. Perfect. So now I have to perform the same thing for the reset handler. So here we go. And by the way, you can make uh, this notation a little bit shorter by providing only the name of the function for the map operator. And the result will be actually the same. All right, so now it means that uh, in the scan operator here, uh, we have not an event anymore, but the state handler function, which can be either accumulation handler or the reset handler, depending on what user clicked reset button or made a click somewhere on the page. So I can simply provide the current state to this handler function and this function eventually handles properly the state for me. Once we save this change, you can see that everything remains working as before and I can still accumulate the state and uh, immediately reset it by clicking the corresponding button. Yes, we had to write some additional code, but we have now the clear separation of concerns. So uh, the logic for each operation lives in a separate function, which can be easily tested and it will be very easy to add a new type of uh, operations and extend our solution. For example, if you would like to add the logic for removing some certain element from the state, you could write a dedicated uh, high order function for it, create another observable that emits um, uh, this handler function whenever uh, this operation has to be executed and then you just have to add this new observable uh, to the merge operator and you are ready to go. All right, so we just learned how to create and manage state in your RxJS streams by using the uh, scan operator. Many of you probably are curious, is this knowledge still relevant? Is it makes sense 
to invest time in learning RxJS because it seems like RxJS will become optional. And here my thoughts about uh, this thing. I'm absolutely sure that RxJS will stay with us for a long, long time, at least because a huge code base has already written with RxJS and this code base has to be maintained. And I cannot imagine how it can be rewritten within a couple of years. I think it's not possible. Another reason is that RxJS still has uh, areas where it really shines. When it comes to asynchronous reactivity, some event-based systems, there RxJS works much better than uh, signals, at least at this point in time. So I believe that investing time into learning RxJS is still relevant and it still uh, pays off in the future. With that, I would like to say thank you so much for watching this video until the end. I hope this video was useful and if so, please share this video with your colleagues and friends because it will help my channel to grow and it always motivates me to create more videos about Angular. Also, don't forget to check out my video courses I mentioned earlier in this video and please leave your comments and uh, thoughts in the comment section for this video. Otherwise, I wish you a productive week ahead, guys. Stay safe and see you in the next video.